children. Okay, so today we're going to work on prepositions. We watched a brain pop, and then we did the quiz together. We watched a little schoolhouse rock. We played a little Jeopardy. You downloaded a PDF, again, that shows you all the prepositions are in the English language. So today we're going to work on a worksheet. So let me give you a hand. So, first part, you're going to highlight in blue the preposition. You're going to highlight in yellow the object of the preposition. Now, again, for a preposition to be a preposition, it has to have the object of a preposition. Sometimes a preposition can actually be an adverb, but if it stands by itself, it is an adverb. If it's a part of a prepositional phrase with an object to its preposition, then it's a preposition. I'll show you what I mean. So, again, first thing we read is we ask ourselves a sentence. The plane finally landed in Rome. Or what are we talking about? If we're talking about the plane. Again, what's our predicate? What did the plane do? It landed. So let's ask ourselves, once we know that, so ask ourselves those adjective and adverb questions. Which landed? Um, how landed? What kind landed? None of that makes sense. But if we ask an adverb class question like, where did it land? How did it land? Why did it land? When did it land? Well, we know where did it land? It landed in Rome. Um, it landed how? In. So in is our preposition. So we're going to make in blue. I don't like that color blue. Let's make it dark. That's, yeah, that's, I don't like blue. Ah, I don't like it. So I think we're going to have to highlight it. There we go. Gosh darn it. No, I don't like that. I don't like anything. That's better. Now, where did it land again? It landed in, in what? In Rome. Again, the objects of the prepositions are always going to answer the who or the what question because objects are always nouns. So we're going to make that yellow. So each one of these two only has one preposition and one object of the preposition. Three has one preposition and one object of the preposition. Four has one preposition and one object of the preposition. Five and six, all of them only have one preposition, one object of the preposition. So one through six at the beginning is worth 12 points. Second part, you're going to highlight in green the prepositional phrase. This includes the preposition, the object of the preposition, and maybe the modifiers of the object. Again, an object of the preposition can have an infinite amount of modifiers, which are always going to be adjectives or articles, and they will always go to that one object of the preposition. So. If we look and say, Dr. Frankenstein conducted amazing experiments in his laboratory, we ask ourselves, who or what are we talking about? We're talking about Dr. Frankenstein. Then again, we ask ourselves the predicate. What did he do? Well, he conducted. Well, we can ask ourselves, what did he conduct? He conducted amazing experiments. Well, where did he conduct those amazing experiments? In his laboratory. So, in is our preposition, laboratory is the object of our preposition, and whose laboratory? His laboratory. So that's a modifier. So we're going to take this whole phrase, we're going to highlight it green. So that is a prepositional phrase. So, in two, there's only one prepositional phrase. In three, there's two prepositional phrases in number three. In four, there's two prepositional phrases in number four. In five, there's only one. 
in six, there's two prepositional phrases in number six. In seven, there's only one. In eight, there's only one prepositional phrase. In nine, there's only one. In 10, there's two prepositional phrases in 10. So, this whole assignment, so there's 16 prepositional phrases in the second part, one through 10. So this whole assignment is worth 26 points. As always, pirates, if you have any questions, please message me on Schoolology, remote learners, please unmute yourself and I'll talk to you. Thank you very much and have a super sparkly day.